All right, get ready because we are diving headfirst into the world of, you guessed it, Finnish education. And hopefully by the time we're done with this deep dive, we'll have a better understanding of why Finland consistently wows everyone with those top tier PISA scores. It's like they found the secret sauce, right? But the research you send over suggests it's not some magical formula. Yeah, no magic wands here. What's really interesting is that Finland's success is more about the way they've designed their system. System. It sounds more like they've woven this intricate tapestry of interconnected elements, carefully piecing it all together over time. That's a great way to put it, actually. It's definitely more of a tapestry than a quick fix. Yeah. And one of the threads that really stands out is their commitment to equity. Oh, absolutely. That came through loud and clear in the research. But it seems like they go beyond just like making sure everyone has access, right? Right. It's not just about having a seat in a classroom. They make sure that each student has the resources and support to actually thrive, mm -hmm. no matter their background or needs. So how does that actually play out? What does that look like in the real world? Imagine, if you will, a system where education is completely free from preschool all the way through university. Wow. Okay, free education, that's a good start. But I'm guessing it's not just about free tuition, right? You're right. They invest a lot, and I mean a lot, in resources and support tailored to individual student needs. Whether a student needs extra help with a learning disability or support with language barriers, their system is designed to help every child succeed. That's impressive, but I can't even imagine how they managed to fund something like that. It's got to be incredibly expensive. Well, it's a significant investment for sure, but they see it as an investment in their future. A highly skilled and educated workforce benefits everyone in the long run. I guess they're playing the long game, huh? It makes you wonder why more countries haven't taken a page from their book. But you know what else struck me? They managed to achieve these incredible results without working their kids to the bone. You're right. That's something that often gets lost in the shuffle when people talk about Finland. They've actually managed to create a system that's both high achieving and incredibly efficient. Their students spend some of the shortest hours in school compared to other high performing countries. That's mind blowing. So how do they do it? What's their secret? Fewer hours, better results. Well, a lot of it comes down to the teachers. Ah, the famous Finnish teachers. Everyone's always raving about them. But what makes them so special? Is it like something in the drinking water over there? Uh -huh. I don't know about that. <laughs> but seriously, teaching in Finland is a highly respected profession. They attract some of the brightest minds and they treat their teachers incredibly well. So it's not just about the money. What else are they doing? They give their teachers a lot of autonomy in their classrooms and really trust them to make decisions about how to best teach their students. Plus, they have excellent working conditions. That trust element is huge, isn't it? They're not constantly breathing down their teachers' necks with standardized tests and evaluations, are they? Nope, not at all. They've moved away from that high-pressure testing culture you see in a lot of places. They trust their teachers to know what's best for their students, and they give them the freedom to actually teach. That's amazing. It makes you wonder what kind of impact that has on teacher morale and ultimately on the kids themselves, right? It creates this really positive cycle. When teachers feel respected and valued, it spills over into their teaching. It's a world away from what we often see with teachers feeling burnt out and undervalued. But this trust doesn't just appear out of thin air, does it? I'm curious how they cultivate this environment of trust within their education system. It's a combination of things. It's ingrained in their culture and they reinforce it through specific policies and practices. A great example is their approach to teacher training. Ah, yes, their teacher training schools. That really stood out in the research. It's like they're training master craftspeople, emphasizing practical experience from day one. You got it. It's very hands-on. Aspiring teachers in Finland spend a lot of time in actual classrooms, working with experienced mentors. They learn by doing, not just by sitting in lectures. That makes so much more sense, right? I mean, who wants a doctor who's only read about surgery in a textbook? Exactly. They get real-world experience right from the start which helps them develop the skills and confidence they'll need to succeed in their own classrooms. It's so much more practical than some of the teacher prep programs I've seen. And the focus on professional development doesn't end there. They encourage teachers to keep learning and growing throughout their careers. It's a bit like that saying, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. It's a lifelong journey. <laughs> and speaking of lifelong learning, that story we found about the teacher with a PhD who went back to school to better support her multicultural students. Oh, right. That was a great example of how much emphasis they place on continuous learning. This teacher already had a doctorate, 
but she recognized that to best serve her students, she needed to expand her knowledge and skills. That's dedication. It really speaks volumes about the Finnish education system's values. Okay, so they have incredible teachers, a system designed to support every student, and this culture of lifelong learning. But they didn't just snap their fingers and make it happen overnight, did they? Not at all. They've been working on this for decades. It's been a long and intentional process. So no quick fixes or magic bullets? Nope. The research was very clear about that. Their success is the result of a long-term vision, consistently applied policies, and a deep-seated belief in what they're doing. They haven't jumped on every trendy bandwagon in education. That's admirable. It's so easy to get caught up in the latest fads, especially in education. Absolutely. But they've stuck to their guns, yeah. and it's clearly paid off. So we've got this unwavering belief in their teachers, a long-term vision, a commitment to consistency. What else makes up this magical Finnish education tapestry? And this is where it gets even more interesting because we have to consider the cultural context. Ah, I see where you're going with this. You can't just copy and paste an education system from one country to another and expect it to work the same way. Right, because a lot of what works in Finland is probably tied to their cultural values. It's not just about the policies themselves. It's about the soil in which those policies are planted. Exactly. And a fascinating example of this connection between culture and education is their language. Wait, their language? You mean that whole thing about how Finnish is so phonetic and how that might be connected to their high literacy rates? Because it completely blew my mind when I read that. Yeah. It's fascinating, isn't it? Because in Finnish, words are spelled exactly as they sound, which can make learning to read a lot easier for kids. It's like their language itself gives them a head start. It really highlights how intertwined these elements are. Of course, it's not the only factor, but it shows that you have to consider everything, even the language itself. It's like this incredible puzzle. Everything fits together, you know, their cultural values, their approach to teaching, the language. It all works together. I like that. It's like all the pieces of the puzzle create this beautifully coherent picture. But it's important to remember that the Finnish system isn't static. They're always adapting and evolving. They're not afraid to change things up if something isn't working. Exactly. They're constantly reflecting and looking for ways to improve. Which is a good reminder for all of us, really. There's always room for growth and improvement. And sometimes the best way to learn and grow is to look outside our own bubble and see how other people are doing things. That's so true. Okay, so we've talked about the big picture of Finnish education, but I'm really interested in digging into some more specific examples. Like what? One of the things that keeps coming up is their unique approach to assessment. Mm -hmm. They're not obsessed with standardized tests, are they? Yeah, that's one of the big differences that jumps out when you compare them to other high-performing countries. Remember how we talked about those PISA rankings? How could I forget? Those things are practically inescapable in agitation circle. Right. So Finland consistently aces those tests, yet they don't put a huge emphasis on standardized testing within their own system. It's almost like they're saying, hey, we trust our teachers to know what's up. It's more about giving teachers the freedom and flexibility to assess their students' progress in ways that make sense for their classrooms. They focus on something called formative assessment. Formative. Hmm, okay. So that sounds kind of like formative years, right? Does it have something to do with how kids learn at a young age? You're on the right track. It's all about providing ongoing feedback and support that helps both teachers and students understand where they are in the learning process. So instead of just getting a grade on a test, it's more about what? Like a, a constant conversation about their learning. Exactly. Imagine a classroom where feedback is a regular part of the learning process, not just something that happens at the end of a unit or a semester. That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? I mean, who wants to wait months to find out they've been doing something wrong the whole time? It's about catching those misunderstandings early on and helping students get back on track. Okay, I'm getting it. But what does this formative assessment thing look like in action? Are Finnish teachers running around with, like, magic feedback wands or something? It's not magic, I promise. Yeah. Finnish teachers use a variety of methods to see how their students are doing, from observing them during class discussions to looking at their work over time. So it's about getting a fuller picture of how a student is progressing, not just a snapshot from one test on one day. Exactly. It helps teachers get to know their students as learners, and adjust their teaching to meet their individual needs. It sounds a lot more humane, to be honest, <laughs> and less stressful for everyone involved, right? Yeah. And that emphasis on well-being is another hallmark of the Finnish system. 
They recognize that you can't separate a child's academic progress from their overall well-being. Which is so important, especially when you hear about the pressure kids are under these days. But how do they actually build well-being into their schools? Are we talking like mandatory nap time and meditation breaks? It's a bit more holistic than that. It's woven into the fabric of their education system. They place a strong emphasis on play-based learning especially in those early years. Which is great because kids learn so much through play, don't they? It's how they naturally explore the world around them. Exactly. Play helps them develop those essential social and emotional skills, not to mention creativity and problem-solving abilities. And they carry this emphasis on well-being with them as they move through the system. So even older kids get to have a little fun. They encourage a healthy balance between academics, the arts, physical activity, and just having time to be kids. So they're not just churning out little robots who can ace a test but don't know how to like interact with another human being. Their goal is to help students become well-rounded individuals, mm. ready to contribute to society in meaningful ways. That's refreshing to hear. And you know what else is interesting? The research showed that Finnish kids tend to have lower levels of anxiety about school compared to kids in other countries. Makes you wonder if maybe, just maybe, they're onto something with this whole well-being thing. Right? Yeah, it definitely makes you think. But it's not just about what happens inside the school building, is it? The research also mentioned the important role of parents and communities in Finland's education system. Yeah, they see education as a shared responsibility. So it's not like that awkward parent-teacher dance where everyone's tiptoeing around each other? Not at all. They really encourage open communication and collaboration between schools, parents, and the wider community. So parents are involved, but they're not breathing down teachers' necks or anything. They trust the teachers in the system, and they work together to support their children's learning. That makes a huge difference, doesn't it, when everyone's on the same page and working together? It creates this really positive and supportive environment for kids to learn and grow. And it's not just limited to parents and teachers. Finnish communities really value education. Libraries offer all sorts of programs for kids and families. Businesses might partner with schools to provide internships or apprenticeships. So it's like this whole ecosystem that supports learning and development. It's really amazing when you think about it. It really is. They've managed to create a system where everyone feels invested in the success of the next generation. Which is ultimately what it's all about, right? Giving kids the best possible start in life. Couldn't agree more. And there's so much we can learn from their approach, even if we can't replicate it exactly. Absolutely. But we'll save that discussion for the next part of our deep dive. Stay tuned, because we're about to unravel the secrets of Finland's education success even further. So we've spent all this time talking about Finland, but it feels like we've really been exploring some fundamental truths about education, you know? Absolutely. The Finnish system is a great example of how powerful it can be when you create an education system that's truly built on values like equity, trust, and well-being. It's about looking beyond those test scores and asking ourselves, what do we ultimately want for our kids? Right. Do we want them to just be good test takers? Mm -hmm. Or do we want them to be curious, engaged learners who are ready to tackle the challenges of the 21st century? I think the answer to that is pretty obvious, but it's easy to get caught up in the weeds, isn't it? Right. We hear about these amazing education systems in other countries and we think, okay, let's just do that. But as we've been saying, it's not that simple. There's no one-size-fits-all solution in education. It's not about copying and pasting. It's about understanding the core principles at play and figuring out how those might translate to different contexts. Exactly. We can draw inspiration from the Finnish experience without trying to recreate it exactly. So instead of trying to turn our schools into little Finlands, we should be asking ourselves, what can we learn from their success? What resonates with our own values? And how can we adapt those lessons to fit our own unique needs and goals? Yeah, you're talking. It's about being open to new ideas, learning from others, and always striving to create the best possible learning environments for our kids. It's about realizing that education is a constantly evolving journey, not a destination. And that sometimes the most important thing is to just keep asking questions and keep the conversation We're... going. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, on that note, I think it's time for us to wrap up this deep dive. But wow, what a journey it's been. A huge thank you to you, our listeners, for joining us on this exploration of Finnish education. Until next time, keep those minds curious and never stop learning.